Hey folks, it's time for the Twip Pro Photo Critique number 60. This is Twip. Hey, welcome back to another Twip Pro Photo Critique. This is critique number 60, and I uh, got lots of cool images to go through. The topic for this week was night, N-I-G-H-T, as opposed to K-N-I-G-H-T. I'm here with my good buddy and partner in crime, Mr. Troy Miller, to talk about some of the images that uh, that have been uh, that have been submitted this week. Troy, lots of lots of good night images, right? There are, yeah. This is going to be very tough to choose, very tough. But it was a it was a really good subject, and I think everybody rose to the challenge, which is great. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I think so too. It was a lots of good ones. I mean, we, you know, you and I kind of went through these independently, and hopefully, we came to the, the same conclusion about who the winner is. Because you know, when it's split, <laughs> it's just it's just not fun. It's just not fun when it's split. <laughs> but, no, no, no. This should be good. Um, cool. So not no housekeeping this time. But I want to announce the topic for next week's at the top so the topic for next week's critique which will be recorded you know if we make it that far will be um uh what did i write down motion <laughs> motion <laughs> motion motion is next week's critique so show us your motion show us your long exposure show us your runners show us motion how would you how would you illustrate motion troy miller Ooh, waves I love waves. Yeah. Uh, Craig Craig Stampley has some amazing waves, and now that I've mentioned it, Craig, you can't enter those. You got to do no. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I love waves, so I love that that soft, subtle blur, and but you still know what it is. So there's lots of things you can do that with, but but waves. I would go shoot waves. The waves. I mean, you can do it with clouds. You could do it with anything. You know, anything that moves, you could do a long exposure. You could do it with fire. You're the fireman, right? Like, okay, see now, <laughs> you just messed me up. <clears throat> yep, you can totally do it with fire. So just saying. All right, so motion is the topic for next week's show. I think we should dive in because we've got a good, what, 20, 21 images to go through this time, right? We do, yeah. We got a good handful. Everybody responded well. Yep, yep, good stuff. All right, let's do it. Here's my screen here. Um, and let's see, who's first? Looks like Warren Luz is first. New, Relatively new member. And Warren says, driving around West Berkeley later in the evening last November, I shot this through the car windshield using a Canon 5D Mark III with an EF 24 to 105 millimeter lens. Uh, let's take a look. Bring this baby up. Come on, Mighty Networks. Load this image for me. <laughs> You're making me look bad. There we it go. Came up on okay. my side. There we go. There, there we go. go. I know. I'm I'm walking a tightrope right now. I'm on Wi Fi, so Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Never do live on Wi Fi. I know, I know, I know. I was changing my config. Anyway, uh here we go. Warren Lose. This is this is his entrant into the night shot. What do you think? Yeah, it's a very, very cool concept. You know, what I like about it the most is is actually that circle, that flare. Mm -hmm. And uh what I would do is I would crop it to a square format and I would keep just the just that flare circle in there crop out the truck and the a little mostly the power pull on the right and space on the left but yeah it's a very interesting very interesting perspective yeah yeah um I would say yeah I would agree with because like we always say in these critiques the the your eye goes to the brightest spot and the brightest spot in this image are those two flares in the middle but also right. that truck so my eye is drawn over to the right side the lower right of the screen and it wants to know why is that truck important because it's illuminated so I would either, like you said, either crop it out or burn it, burn the heck out of it down so it's not so obvious in there. Right, right. And and kudos to Warren for having his camera in his vehicle when he's driving around. That's that's good. That dedication. Wait a minute, don't you? You don't, you, don't you carry your? Yeah, it's on my phone. <laughs> that's cheating, man. That's cheating. Come on. <laughs> You got you to walk around with that camera strap slung over your shoulder like a real photographer. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't either. Yeah, my phone is what I carry with me. Uh, Warren Luz, thank you very much. And aloha. Uh, next shot is from Tim Engel, Rocket in Times Square. Let's bring this one up. Look at that one. Have you been to Times Square? No, you know I haven't. Oh, that's <laughs> You're right. You're setting me up. You know. <laughs> I know that was evil. I know. <laughs> you got to get oh. to Times Square, man. You got to get out there. It's a big country. I know. Uh, I know. My daughter wants to go back. She's been there. She wants to go. So yeah. we'll do it. 
This is this is what you call peak action right here, right? Right. Yeah, this is this is really great, and and he didn't cut off any arms or any legs or anything, so this is fantastic. Um, <laughs> you know, natural light. That's really cool. I love all the people watching. You know, some of them are are like, I can do that. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. No, they're not. No, they're not. Yeah, no. it takes, takes a lot of skill to be able to do that, though. I mean, just, I mean, well, you know, when I look at a shot like this, I think of having been in Times Square, how would the, it is just a, depending on the time of day, I guess, um, and maybe not so much, but there's an ocean of people there. There's like, it's just always somebody walking in next to you or in front of you or behind you or something. And, and, and to get a shot like this, uh, I'm guessing Tim had to cordon off that area or something in order to, you know, get this thing, get the shot set up. And I'm looking at it. Do you do you think this is natural light? Because you said it, you said it, you think it's natural light. You don't think he popped a flash in here at all? Um, I don't think so. No, I mean, it looks it looks like it's all lit from those billboards and surrounding light to me. I mean, if there isn't if there is light being thrown into here, it's very, very, very subtle. But I don't really see any indication of it, which means if it was, it was done correctly. So. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to Tim, let us know in the comments. I'm going to I'm going to place my my bets on he popped a flash in here. Yeah, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say it's all natural light. All right. Um, I would like to see it cropped a little bit tighter, though. I think we have you know so much space around it that we don't need mm-hmm. um, yeah the bottom from the bottom especially yeah I mean, maybe he left that for text i'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> it's a magazine shot well, about dancers there dancers in new york city you know and it's you know this negative space is for frederick there you go there you go there you go all right tim engel thank you sir yes uh kai Grotert's up next kai says we are all made of stars. <laughs> I, I nice have a b- thank you, <laughs> thank you, Dave. Uh, I have a bazillion Milky Way photos, and as much as I love the Milky Way, I recently started to appreciate nightscapes that don't necessarily feature the Milky Way. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that Joshua tree. I wonder how old that guy is. Isn't there some sort of formula you can tell how old a Joshua tree is by the number of uh, branches or forks? that it has i think it's like 10 years per or something like that yeah you could just ask them because they talk you know that right no (laughs) (laughs) okay i don't know i have no idea how to figure it out (laughs) the joshua trees i've been around uh, didn't didn't talk i don't know maybe they had some against me because last time i was out there photographing them they talked to me um (laughs) (laughs) and what were you smoking at the time (laughs) When it's two in the morning and it's a full moon, you know, it's it's great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, these these shots are, are always so wonderful. And, and Joshua Tree is not far from me. It's like two hours. So anytime there's a full moon, I like to get out there and walk around, especially in the summertime. If you ever get a chance, you go out there in the summertime and you walk around. It's beautiful in the evening and the world is just lit up. You can you, you can just walk around. You can see it's like it's like, you know, morning time. Wow. Um, so I, I mean, I have an affinity for these type of shots. I really love this. Yeah. My, my only critique would be is I wish that the Joshua tree was sharp. Mm. Um, it's a little bit soft. Towards uh, the bottom, it, especially, right? Yeah, but but I'm assuming <clears throat> that, you know, you're shooting with like a 24 to 14 or something like that. So that's going to happen. But I'm just nitpicking. Mm-hmm. But the stars are sharp. And that's not easy to do if you haven't shot you know nightscape stuff it's, because they're it's moving funny. right they're they're point light sources and well they're not moving you are moving well i guess everything's moving technically but but you're on a spinning globe so to get a shot with with these sharp like this he did have to use a flash right this is a flash or is this paint did he paint this with light because this looks it looks eerily like he painted this with light or maybe this is a multiple exposure full um, moon i'm guessing full moon Mm, I'm thinking painted with light. All right, Kai, you got to let us know. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking he he did a long. Or I think he he probably did multiple exposures, one for the stars, and then a second one for the Joshua tree in the foreground, and painted it with light to make it pop out. No, no, no. There's no way he painted that with light because that Joshua tree is 20 feet tall, and the and the light is coming down from the top side of the branches, so. How he would have got light up that high? I guess he could have. I was but... going to say, you know, you see those stars out there. Light is coming from them, so and they're pretty far away. <laughs> moon. <laughs> you think it's the moon? It's the moon. All right, we got two bets going on. <laughs> we got two bets that need to be settled in the community. So. Oh God, we're barely into this thing. Yeah, I know, I know. Already controversy and tension. Killer right. shot, Kai. 
Really nice. Yeah, it is really nice. I love that. Uh, Jeff is up next. Jeff uh, and Neeson. Uh, let's see what he says. I thought I'd send more one more image to give a different perspective. So there's, he sent two of these images. I don't know if he intended these for critique. These look like these look like shots of um, the bar in his backyard, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a chessboard back there. Mm -hmm. There's very nice gazebo. Very nice backyard. I'm jealous. Uh, let's look yeah, at the other. Foster's on tap. Uh huh. Here's another shot of Jeff's backyard here. Uh, what did he say? Let me read this. What he wrote. He said, "Just finished my gazebo. There's been a few years in the making, so I did a quick night shot. I printed a 41 f foot, really, a 41 foot wall mural uh, with my muta. I guess that's a printer. Um, the gazebo has fosters on tap, a, a eight foot octagon hot tub, plus full blown entertainment <laughs> center. The winner we invited over. Oh, he, he's in Folsom, California. We can make it there, Troy." <laughs> Yeah, let's go. <laughs> we could totally make it there. That's uh, Folsom is what maybe a couple hours from me. Uh, that's uh, that's Sacramento actually. So we could we could make a party there. We could get Stephen Sharf, you, me, Tim Engel. We could go there and hang out and jump yeah. in the hot tub. Love it, love it. Very cool. Congratulations, man. Good work. All right, let's move on to the next one. Armando Brook is up next. Armando says this long exposure. Uh, was taken over the big park in Sao Paulo called Park du hmm. uh, <laughs> Ibar Pereira. Ibar Pereira. I think I got that. Ibar Pereira. Just go with hmm. I'm gonna that go with hmm. You saw me. Like my brain was like uh uh. <laughs> brain just gave up. It did. It yeah. Some steam came out and it just stopped. Um. All right. What do you what do you think of this shot? You know, I, I, I dig it. I, I like the fact that you've got the, the lights wrapping around the, you know, the pinnacle in the middle, the tower in the middle. You've got the duotone in the sky. Um, I do. I, I, I really like it. The more I look at it, though, it's tilted a little bit to the right. It is. So that's I was going to say that. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of killing me just a little bit. That's my, my OCD, just like, uh. <laughs> No, I don't think it's your OCD. I mean, your brain, my brain instantly went to that because you have this thing in the middle that's supposed to be perpendicular to the ground, right? So right. my brain instantly went to, is that thing tilted or is the whole thing tilted? Oh, the whole thing is tilted. You know, so then then my brain went to the horizon in the back and I could see that that's tilted. By the way, that looks killer. That that skyline horizon back there with the illumination <laughs> around the park or whatever. I think that's a mountain range or something or something and like right before the right before the buildings start up again that it just looks it looks fairy tale like back there yeah yeah those are clouds yeah i dig that um my my only other suggestion is is that i don't know maybe if it's in if the mighty network is doing it but the blacks seem way too black mm, uh, i would love a, a little bit more detail in there yeah yeah but nice shot definitely a nice a wonderful night, shot, night shot. Yeah. I totally want to go there, man. Every time I see one of his shots, it makes me want to go to Brazil. Oh. Thank you, Armando. All right, next shot up is from Laura Patton. Milky Way over the Can Camungus in New Hampshire. Well, they're hitting you with some words today, huh? I know. They're I'm testing me. I'm not announcing. They're testing me. I'm going to have to invoke my uh, invoke Siri or something to help me with these. Um, what do you think of this? And now, see, you know, in helping judge your IEPPV image competition, I noticed a lot of the entrants had borders and key lines around their mm -hmm. images. And I was curious about that. Was that is that a directive or is that encouraged or was that just a personal choice that a bunch of people happened to make? Um, it's strongly encouraged because it, 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 it hails back to the days when we did print. And the goal is that you're submitting a finished image and a finished image should be in a frame or on a mat or finished in some way. And then in digital, if you just have an image floating in space, it doesn't have that finished look. It doesn't feel final. Mm -hmm. And also it's hard to tell where the end of the image can can be sometimes. So if this was a normal skyline and we have a white background, I might not know where the end of your skyline is. So key lines and borders help contain the image and make it viewable. You trap so, it. Trap it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Well that said, um, what do you what do you think of with this shot that she put together? I love the composition elements of this. You know, the the horizon on the on the lower thirds, the tree, the single element there. Um, it feels a little bit over processed to me. I mean, the the Milky Way seems a little bit pushed, and it seems soft. I don't know if that was intentional. 
mm-hmm. um, like put a, a soft effect. And it's hard when when you've seen so many Milky Way shots, you tend to have this perception of, oh, this is what I what I want to see in a Milky Way shot. So maybe yeah. that's not really fair. I love the composition elements going on in this. It just feels like the the sky has been been pushed, you know, to try to pull out some detail. Yeah. Yeah, and but maybe it's a I'm, network thing. I'm always blown away by Milky Way shots that are that are executed. Maybe because I haven't done one yet. You've done a bazillion of these things, right? Uh, I've done a I've done a million of them, not a bazillion. Kai <laughs> would have been the one who's done the bazillion. Yeah, um, I've done a fair amount. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a I'm a fan of the silhouetted foreground though. I love the I love the you know the, the you can see the land mass and the singular lonely tree just sitting yep. there against the kind of the grandeur that is the the Milky Way on edge. I like that. Yeah, I love it, especially especially if you actually found it that way. And I'm not suggesting Laura hasn't. But, you know, I've done a fair amount where I go into Photoshop and render me a tree and drop that silhouette in there. Mm. Oh, that's right. You can do that in Photoshop. Right. Yeah, I always forget about that. Yeah, they don't look like real trees until they're a silhouette. Then they look pretty good. So. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But I like it. I like it. It's a, it's it's very nice. Very nice image, Laura. Yep. Good job. All right. Next shot up is from Tanja Deprens. Deprens. Uh, the artist com- contemplating <clears throat> on this trapeze during the performance. There I was sitting at the border of a pond at plus or minus 25 mil- meters getting my shoes soaked. Uh, waiting for a shot worthwhile. Sometimes being a concert photographer can be a challenge. No other light source than his torches, the power of fire. Let's take a look at this guy. Wow. Pay no attention to my Wi Fi, guys. It's, it's chugging along today. Um, yeah, look at this shot. Wow. Yeah, you have to look at this big. You have to look at this bigger in order to understand what's going on in here. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it and it took me, you know, I looked at it first and then I then I read the description. So at first I wasn't quite sure what he was doing. Um but he looks intent. He looks like he's very focused. Mhm. Mhm. I would be too. Fire and, you know, who knows, you know, I mean, he's off the ground a fair amount, right? <laughs> so. Right. So there's always falling involved, you know, potential falling, and uh-huh. that's always scary. Yeah, falling, uh fear of death and incineration. Yeah, that would that would do. <laughs> <laughs> the impact. Yeah, not the falling part so much. Yeah. People fall for recreation, but it's the landing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's the impact that you got to look out for. So um, this is cool. This is a cool shot. I know I know what you're going to say. Can I take a guess? Yes, of course. There's uh, two things, three things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I well, I I think I know two of the three things that you might. Well, let me see if I get all three. All right, drum roll, please. Um, the smoke in front of the the head of the subject. Mm, minor, yes. Um, the light between his legs. You probably would have cloned that out. Yes. And the you probably would have cropped a little bit off the left side to make it more balanced, and maybe off the top a little. And you're upset that she cut off his foot. <laughs> okay so not not all in that order uh the foot i can i can put up with right because it's a photojournalistic shot so but there's obviously plenty of space to have included his foot so i would have i would have liked that i would have suggested that mm-hmm. and then i would crop this super tight and horizontal uh you know crop almost off the top of his head right to the back on the left hand side just off of that last flame and just fill the frame with those diagonal lines of the the pole that's on fire and the cable that he's sitting on and i think you'd have a much much stronger impact image there's so much negative space going on it doesn't help draw us into his face yeah until until after it's been cropped and then if you could get rid of that that uh, light between his legs and the wisp of smoke above his head, because it's it's just distracting. That's all. Yeah. Um, yep. But it, definitely it's not crop. really adding to it at all. Right. 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 But definitely cropping is going to make this one much more powerful. And I, and I love the shot and in that it's lit by the fire. You know, I like fire. So, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Definitely one of my favorites. Lovely. Wow. And then look at this. Uh, Antwerp. I guess she's in Antwerp. Wow, Belgium! Wow, we have such a diverse, multinational user base, member base in Twip Pro. I know. Uh, here's Candy Chivalry, Super Moon Sunrise at Stiltsville. Uh, let's take a look at this one. Look at that. That's beautiful. That is amazing. That is just 
uh, so many, so many ways to crop this. And I'm really enamored with this one. This one, this one is absolutely fantastic. Um, my, I, I just, I just love it. I think that it, I think it would work awesome if you crop just below the hut and put the horizon on the lower third. That would be a crop that works. Mm. Um, I think if we cropped a little bit off the right, I don't think we need as much on the right. Leave the full reflection at the bottom in, but crop off on the right. I think that works fantastically well. Mm -hmm. I would get rid of that little blue dot. That's on the, the only. That would be my yeah. only nit. That the get, killing that little blue dot on the horizon, and also to the to the left of the of the little hut there. There's a little pylon sticking up. You see it just below yeah, the horizon like line. Sign or something. Yeah, yeah, I probably would have knocked that out too, just to just to clean it up a little bit. But I actually yeah. like the crop of this. I like the the expanse of water and the the limited sky. Like you said, there's for these kinds of shots, the you know the crop is completely subjective because you could have uh, aimed the camera up a little bit or cropped it so that the the horizon line was was cutting down was was at the one of the thirds mm -hmm. at the bottom, right? And you have more mm -hmm. sky than water. Um, but I actually like the water because it makes me feel like there's depth there. I mean, we're we're in deep water, and this this little hut is sitting there, you know, lonely in the, in this uh, this this deep expanse of water out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. I'm, I mean, the only thing that's that's really there's there's tension for me because it's so tight to the left, and now I'm getting really picky, right? Like I wish that we could swing the camera slightly left include a little bit more of the left of the hut because it feels so tight against that against that um, left border right mm -hmm. the left edge of the, the print it's minor <clears throat> but th those are little things um, but definitely that that blue dot man my, my brain keeps going look at the blue dot look at the blue dot yeah There's no it dot. goes straight to it right I know <laughs> what is that look blue, dot? blue is dot is that a hey. ship is that a buoy is that an alien <laughs> space craft? what is that <laughs> it's a blue dot that's all i know it's a pale blue dot it's another blue dot hey look there's a hey there's a blue dot yeah i know i know yeah i would have killed that too but you know Sorry, great image though i love this image i am yeah. definitely a fan i guess like you know this one definitely passed the would you print it and hang it test right oh yeah yeah this is this is a shot that i wish i had taken yeah right? when I, certain shots you look at and you're like Oh, I want that. <laughs> right. Yeah. How come I didn't take that? I'm jealous of that. Um, next shot is from Brian Taylor. Brian says, here, uh, here are a series of photos I made into a panel during the super blood moon eclipse. I took this with my Sony a7 III and Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter in uh, negative 14 degrees. Oof. Um, I hope it shows up okay. I, I did know how... Or if a panel would be viewed correctly. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, we can see it fine. You know, yeah, these are great. It's like a textbook shot, right? It's like a textbook shot that yeah. describes describe yeah. I could see a, a you know, this this going along with a paragraph of text explaining what a super moon is and how they occur. A super blood moon, yeah. Super blood moon, sorry, yeah. Super blood yeah. moon. Gotta get those right, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the you know the moon was kind of this color last night here up in at least as viewed from Northern California it was. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, no. I mean, this is great. I'm. I don't. I don't usually shoot the eclipse because everybody does, so it's not something that I've done a lot of. But it's not easy, and getting the right exposure on the surface of the moon is challenging for a lot of people because they don't realize that a full moon is reflected is the sunny sixteen rule. It's the same exposure that you get in a, in, in high noon, mm -hmm. you know, outside. Yeah. So you see a lot of them not done correctly. And this one's done very nicely where the exposure is nice. You can see detail in the moon. Um, so I, I dig it. Very good use of, uh, of the night stuff. Yeah, I agree. Very nice. I like the, the, the black, just the black expanse of nothingness behind this, this gigantic moon there. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Brian Taylor. Good work, man. Yeah, thanks, Brian. From Wisconsin. All right. Next shot up is from Peter Walsh. Peter Walsh is in my neighborhood. He says, uh, Bay Bridge from the Yerba Buena Island. Uh, I was just over at Yerba Buena Island, um, and it is uh, undergoing some extreme gentrification right now <laughs> it is crazy they're like because it used to be a military base and they turned it into low-income housing and now they're turning into high-income housing it's so <clears throat> so crazy 
Um, so this is the Bay Bridge from Yorba Buena Island. I had just got a tripod for my birthday and wanted to try it out. I didn't have a wired shutter release at the time, so I used a remote shutter release and a camera timer. Take a look. Oh, cool. Yeah. Very, very nice. Yep. Love that bridge. I've never seen... I don't know that I've ever seen that bridge. That's that's such a cool... It yeah, looks, this I mean, is the it, north. You've seen the Bay Bridge. Or, yeah, you've seen the, the Bay Bridge, which is kind of the older-looking sister bridge to the Golden Gate. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this one is... So the, the Bay Bridge comes out of San Francisco, bounces off of Yer- Yerba Buena Island, um, and then goes into Oakland. This is the span from Yerba Buena Island into Oakland. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's all foreign to me. I have no idea where any of that's at. You got to get out more, man. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I probably, you know what? I've probably driven on it. Like, I, but I just never, I've never, I don't know that I've seen this angle before. So it's very, it's very unique and interesting to me. I really, I really like it. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure why the left side of the frame in the water is clipped. Mm, oh, you mean dark right there? Yeah. Yeah. That seems interesting that it would clip right there. So I'm wondering if there's like a linear gradient going on in there. Well, you said this was a pano, right? So, you know, if, if he if he shot this as a pano and had it on auto exposure and the, the exposure that the camera picked was that, that's what you're going to get. You know, when you shoot a pano, especially if something like this, you have to lock your exposure down. Yeah. Yeah. I would, you know what, I would probably crop that off, to be honest. I'd probably crop off the left side right to the, right to the bridge itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, right where the road looks like it turns to the right. Mm -hmm. I'd probably clip it right there and even maybe a little bit up from the bottom so that our focus is on the, the, the angles, you know, all the leading lines and and the triangles and stuff of the bridge itself. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Very cool. Nice shot, though. I know exactly where we're standing. I was out there with some folks from DJI once flying drones uh, <laughs> over that water right there. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. I love it. All right. Peter Walsh, thank you so much for that. Hey, Peter Walsh is in, the, in, in, Walsh is in the area, so we could go get in that hot tub, get in Jeff's hot tub with him. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, we're building a party, man. You, I hope that hot yeah, tub's ready. That's it. <laughs> Uh, I require Lay's potato chips and, uh, and a little wine. That'll be good. Uh, here's Thomas Aaron. And Thomas says, uh, there are things worse than night. For example, there's darkness, exemplified yeah, by the Moab Death Star. This is an unstaged, unedited photojournalism piece of an X-Wing fighter's futile and failed attempt to destroy the Empire's Death Star before it destroys Alderaan. Or... Is it a composite of two images, a photo of the moon and a jetliner taking in Moab with my 200 mil lens and another shot of the moon taken on a cloudy night in Bennett, Colorado with my 600 mil lens? I'm going to go with the first. <laughs> yeah, I agree. This is an I X-wing. agree. I was in Moab and I saw this. This happened. Thomas and I were there. Yeah, I, I'm going with the X-Wing. In my, in my head, it's the X-Wing. I love that. Yeah. This is cool. Yeah, very, very well done. Very creative. I, I like it. I like it. It's a good, good story. And we, you know what? Now that he wrote that in there, you and I don't have to guess what the story's all about. Mm-mm. No, no. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I was. I would have said this is like, these are two. This is a, a binary planet system, and one is they're they're locked in a in a orbit with each other, and pulling one is pulling it towards the other, and eventually, in a million years, they're going to crash into each other. That's what I was. It even it even looks like Thomas put the dish in the big moon. See that? Yeah, yeah it looks like just very subtly put the dish in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I see a oh, face in there. I actually see Mickey Mouse in there. I don't know what you see. You do? Yeah, I see yeah. Mickey Mouse. The yeah, moon no. in the moon. There's no Mickey Mouse. Sorry. <laughs> hey, don't, don't crush my dreams, man. Leave me. <laughs> there is a Mickey Mouse. Come on. It's made of cheese. I've met him. I've met him after paying gobs of money in <laughs> Disneyland. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and his girlfriend. Uh, Michael DeRay is up next. He says, this is a night in Savannah, Georgia. That's one place I haven't been to yet. I want to get there. Oh, I've been there. To Savannah, Georgia? Yeah. <laughs> You have not been to Savannah, Georgia. <laughs> you have you you can't get up to escape velocity to get out of the Orange County. <laughs> well, I've been to Hawaii twice. So oh, okay. There you go. Okay. Oh, yeah, you have. That counts. You walked on volcanoes. What am I thinking? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You got I like there. I like this. I like this, Michael. This is this is really cool. Um, I'm just sort of taking it in. You know, we we did some street shots in Moab. We were walking around late at night shooting, and so this kind of reminded me of that. 
uh, I would I would crop off the left side right up to the canopy and crop up from the bottom just above the, the ashtray. So you would cut off the Guinness, the Guinness. I, I would like I would like to see the Guinness in there, but I don't like the ashtray. So but if we crop it nice and tight, then really what it is, it's a focus on the PS Tavern. Mm -hmm. And it, then then it draws us right into that because it'll be on thirds and everything. So I really I really think that would help. But, you know, I love I love street shots. This is great. Yeah. 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 Especially yeah. street. If you do street, you don't have a tripod. That's fine. Still shoot long exposure. It's awesome. It's just awesome. You get that really you know, dreamy sort of ethereal type feel with a little bit of blur in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's very nice. Very nice. Night, man. Night. Night is a whole nother world for photography. Oh yeah. I love it. All right. Speaking of a whole nother world, here's another shot of the Bay Bridge by Michael Morrison. And Michael said, Michael Morrison says, uh, this is the Bay Bridge into the fog, carefully shot from a boat going under the Bay Bridge in San Francisco. This is this is the jealous sibling um, bridge of its golden sister. Yeah, the Golden Gate Bridge. I thought it was time to give it some love. This is my first critique. Go easy on the newbie. <laughs> <laughs> we will be gentle. Uh, he says his goal was to create a feeling of depth and mystery using leading lines and the rule of thirds. Perhaps there is a treasure on that island that it leads to. Michael Morrison from Morrison Pictures. And he is in um, Trabaco Canyon, California. Hey, another neighbor. Let's bring this up. He's in where? It's oh, Trabuco Canyon. Mm -hmm. Oh, I you know where that go, is? Let's go four wheeling out there. Yeah. Oh, okay. There yeah, it's North Canyon. I'm right where that's at. I like it out there. It caught on fire a couple years ago uh -oh. last year. Where yeah. in California did not catch on fire? <laughs> yeah, this is true. Yeah, this is true. Um, Michael, killer shot. I love the I love the soft tones. So often, you know, we see we see you know stark daylight and mm -hmm. and really crisp, crunchy tones. So I really like that. My, my only thing is, and I, and I think Frederick is seeing the same thing, is we're tilting, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit to the right. Mm -hmm. So it'd be nice to have that that tower quite vertical. Yeah, that's, that's easily fixed with, you know, if you're in Photoshop or whatever tool, the, the mm -hmm. straighten tool, just dragging a line up and mm -hmm. it'll automatically make it straight. Um, just uh, and Troy, for your own edification, this is this is the south side of the Bay Bridge, so that's Yerba Buena Island that it's ending at in the distance, or also oh. known as Treasure Island. And on the other side of that little mound there is that other bridge that you saw. Oh, how cool! How cool! Uh, and and so, Michael, what I would also do is is to keep that leading line in the composition working really well. Is I would crop it slightly tighter too. So let the bridge end in the lower right hand corner. You mm -hmm. don't need you don't have to leave space there. You can crop that right to the bridge and that diagonal line goes from the top left corner right out the bottom right hand corner. Rotate that just a little bit so we have those vertical lines um, and you can call it done. And we're styling. Yep. Yeah, I love it. Love this bridge. It's almost black and white. You know, there's a little bit of color in there, but I like that semi monochromatic. Mm hmm. Yeah. With the warm light of the cars going over the bridge. Yeah. Oh, is that what that is in there? Mm -hmm. Is the car? Those are, those are headlights. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I think that's, this, a, I think that's a double that's a double decker bridge, by the way. Didn't Godzilla tear that apart or something? In <laughs> uh, we had an earthquake that damaged it. <laughs> <laughs> I think Godzilla probably focuses on the, the Golden Gate Bridge, though. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, you're probably right. Yeah, it's yeah. more epic. Yeah, it is. It's been destroyed many, many times by Transformers and, you yeah. know, Star Trek, whale, all kinds of stuff. Um, here we go. Thank you, Michael Morrison. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Next shot is from Thomas. Oh, no, that was, we did that one. Uh, it's Mark Domke. Hey, Mark. Mark. Domke. This is not a night shot, though, I don't believe. So we'll look at yeah. it anyway. No, but if you made it black and white and made it really, really dark, we wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we would know. Uh, this is a cool drone shot. I saw a video from a shot that he did. This is uh, he's 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 really good on those sticks, man. On those drone sticks. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, documenting all that all that flood and stuff. Yeah, yes. the flooding out there. Yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. Thank you, Mark. Okay, let's move on. Michael Rhino with a night shot. So Michael Rhino says, uh, Star Trails over Utah. Here's a night shot that I took during a recent trip through Utah. <clears throat> let's bring this up. Look at that. 
star trails and i'm guessing those vertical those those uh lines that are shooting through the scene are aircraft right they're aircraft yeah yeah and and as as painful as it is you really need to go in and take all those out i i do it i mean that's what we do you have to go in and take those out um it sucks have you done that before you got it that's like oh yeah yeah i mean i suppose this is relatively easy this is a clone job right but uh, yeah, it's, it is not relatively easy though. Cause unfortunately you've got those little tiny lines from the stars, the streak. So you have to make sure that every single dot you clone out maintains the continuity of that little line. Otherwise mm. you can tell your brain can see the pattern where you've cloned it. So it really is a tough job. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really, really awful. And the, and the, so, the, the light at the middle of the sort of the swirl, the sphere, mm -hmm. the disc, that's the North star, right? Yeah, Polaris. Yeah, that's the Polaris, North Star. right? So, should that have been in the middle of, or is it? Is it like I, I haven't done a shot like this, but my understanding of the mechanics of a shot like this is that needs to be dead center of of the rotation. Is it, was it dead center? Well, it, it. I mean, it's as dead center as the universe is going to make it. It really doesn't. We don't have any control over that. <clears throat> so you, mean the, you can't move the it? stars. <laughs> well, <laughs> I can. <laughs> Use the force, Luke. Yeah. So the stars in the middle aren't moving nearly as fast as the stars on the outside edge. So that's why that center looks like it does. Right. You know, because there are stars that are closer and further and, and they and they move at different different rates. Mm -hmm. So based on the rotation. So, I mean, this looks completely natural. Um, the fact that that you kept the shutter open for 35 minutes is a is a little bit of a challenge because long 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 exposures tend to add noise mm -hmm. and tend to allow um for overheating and if a battery dies you lose the entire shot yeah so i do them in four minute exposures and then and then assemble them later in photoshop oh interesting yeah sounds like that a way tutorial you can... in the making there troy miller yeah yeah it's nice because that way you know you don't chew your battery up <clears throat> right right or you know yeah Interesting. Love this stuff. Love it. Love it. Yeah. How can you nice not shot, like Michael photography? Rhino. Yeah, Michael Rhino. Thank you, man. That's a very, yeah. very nice shot. Very nice shot. All right, moving right along. Uh, next shot is from Lam. Um, Lam, I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name. WP. I'm going to say Whip. Uh, he says, artificial snow coming down to the main entrance of the shopping mall in Kuala Lumpur on Christmas Eve last year. People from all walks of life were overjoyed in this once in a year event. Let's take a look at this. Wow, it looks like Times Square. Yeah, it does. <clears throat> that artificial snow, that's super cool. It is, man. <laughs> that is. Every time I see that kind of stuff, even when I see the confetti in Times Square on New Year's Eve, you know what I think? I hate to be the guy or the crew that had to clean all that mess up. <laughs> it <would> suck. <laughs> well, hopefully it's all biodegradable and it's easy to clean up. Not like in the old movie days where they used, uh, you know, shredded asbestos. Ugh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Or cornflakes. Did they use cornflakes? Really? They used to use cornflakes, yeah, and they would have big problems with the rats. In the oh, studio. right. The rats would be like, woo, Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah this shot. What do, you, what do you think of this shot? No, I think really great shot it's a fun shot um the the challenge with shots like this is is where as the photographer where do you want me to look where is my main subject right so when you're doing things like this it's about timing it's about what's what's the subject matter is it somebody's face um and you know this frederick as a photojournalist it's you really got to kind of like see the shot in your head and then wait for it to happen mm -hmm. so there's a lot of excitement and fun going on in this shot but I'm not sure what it is it, without the explanation. I'm not sure where I should look. I see lots of busyness happening. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 And that it, it's, it is definitely a photojournalistic shot, right? So the the subject is the entirety of the shot. And it is the, the, the mood and the feeling, like you said, this of this once in a lifetime moment. So. Yeah. That's another place I need to get to, Kuala Lumpur. Some planet's just too big, man. So much stuff to see. <laughs> all right next shot is up from and thank you lamb for that and welcome to the community yes. by the way yeah thank you uh mike doran's up let's see mike doran says this image was created during the american le mans series race into the night at laguna Se seco raceway several years ago let's bring this up 
All right, here we go. 2017 from Mike Duran. What do, what do you think? You know, it's it's fun to shoot at night, and I like the vehicle at night. I think that's really cool. I like the headlights. Um, I'm I'm struggling getting past the uh, uh, retouching spot in the lower right hand corner, or not right hand corner, but right below the car's oh, right, right left rear tire. I our, see it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, there's a big there's a big retouching spot, so there must have been something there. Um, other than that, I mean, I, I really like the shot. I don't I think we have too much foreground. We don't really need all that foreground. I think this would be really great as a uh, as a horizontal. I think it'd be really great. You know, I thought I, I thought you were gonna say I I I didn't for some reason my brain didn't even go to that. I think I was my, I was fixated on the headlights, um, but the uh, yeah I think you're right about the foreground. And in fact if he had just tilted up a little bit to lose some of that foreground. I don't know if this is the final crop, but if it is, if he had tilted up a little bit so we had a little bit more above the car and less below it, and mm. I thought you were going to say it was a little bit too close to the, to the right side of the frame. Do you, you think it's okay there? No, I'm okay with that. I mean, it, you know, the car is moving to the left, and it's always nice to have a little bit of uh, space in front of the car, and that's where the headlights are, so that's where our eye is drawn. Mm -hmm. So we're less likely to see the the tightness on the back right, which I'm okay with that. I mean, it adds tension, which is, you know, it's a race car, right? So stuff's moving fast. Yeah. Um, I just think it's the foreground. There's a lot of foreground, and then, of course, we've got that, that retouching spot in there. Yeah. All right. Mike Dorn, thank you, sir. I think Mike Doran has a room at Laguna Seca. I'm just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, here's uh, Rick uh, Kilboy. Another new member. Welcome, Rick. Ghost Tax. Light Rail, Salt Lake City, Utah. Dude, that's cool. That's a neat, that's a neat use. That's a neat use of, uh, you know, a little bit longer exposure and letting things move. And... Mm-hmm. I like that. I like that. Something, something's going on with the buildings on the left. They're tilting away. Yeah, it's like like um, what was it? What is that called when when you have convergence of lines? It's like the reverse of that. Parallax. Is it like a parallax? Mm, yeah. A, yeah. There's something else. I forget what it is. I mean, they're going to meet at the bottom, so it's like a wide-angle lens. You know, when you tilt up, mm -hmm. they're, yeah. they're, it's going to yeah, it's going to make those buildings at the top move away. So I would probably just fix that in 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 Photoshop or Capture One or whatever. Um, and then you know, also like the light pole right there to the right of the train, you can see it's tilting a little bit to the right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I love the concept. Yeah. No, this is cool. Yeah, Salt Lake City. I've never have you, I've never been there either. This. I love. I love to ask me if I've been there, but you know, <laughs> I I pulled that back. I pulled it back. <laughs> I might have driven through there. I've driven through pretty much everywhere. Really? I've US. been to Utah. Yeah. I'm stopping through at the airport. I don't know if that counts. Connecting flights. Yeah, I don't think I've been through Salt Lake though. And in in this image, you know, as I'm looking at it, I I would probably have brought the shadows down. I mean, I like the soft. Mm -hmm. um, contrast for the most part but i think i think in the night i think this would work better to be more, i mean i don't know what you think but i think it'd be better that the dark be dark i don't know i kind of like it like this i like I like the semi washed out feeling of it because it, it it feels like because it's taking me there right and i kind of feel like that's what i would have seen you know with my own eyes if i was there without the long exposure element but yeah, yeah. I, I kind of like it. I don't. I don't mind it. The only thing I do mind a little bit is it looks like the blacks are a little bit blocky on the sky and the in the distance between mm -hmm. the buildings. You see how it's sort of we're getting a little noisy back there or some kind of anomaly yeah, it looks happening. Like there could be something on the lens or there's mm -hmm. flare <clears throat> going mm -hmm. on in in there a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you maybe could have made that dark or darker to hide that or clone it out or something. But dark I like the shot. Love it. Love it. All right. And the next shot is from Eric Pronsky. Wow, look at this. So this is Caesar's reflection at night. I was walking back from dinner on the Las Vegas Strip and spotted this reflecting pool in front of Caesar's Palace. It didn't have my tripod with me, so I kicked the ISO to 3200 so I could squeeze out one one twentieth or one twentieth of a second with a 15 millimeter lens on his A7R2. The color version was a bit too noisy and grainy after post and. Uh, 
and he thought, okay, but the black and white was stronger. I'd be glad to share the color for comparison if you would like. Cheers, Eric from Austin, Texas. Look at that. That is crisp. Yeah. Yeah, that is nice. I'd love to see the color just to compare. But mm -hmm. yeah, this is this is a good example of where, where black and white really comes in. and Because <clears throat> then, then it's all about the building and all those angles and the reflections. And mm -hmm. yeah, this is really great. You know, I was thinking like I, what I would like to see is a, a, a vertical crop of this where I'm just seeing Caesar, the, the Caesar's Palace building on the left side of the frame. Mm hmm. And the reflection of it in the reflecting pool is going to give me that, yep. that, that level of symmetry, right? Yeah, we got that vanishing point, too. So, I, yeah, I was, I was actually cropping with my hand as you were saying mm -hmm. that. So It's almost cutting it right down the middle, right? Uh, yes. Actually, I would, I would cut it if you took the building Caesar's Palace on the left all the way back till it, till it uh, sort of tapers off. I would mm -hmm. crop it right there. I yeah. wouldn't show the center building. Yeah. Yeah. And you got this nice vertical with the, that vanishing point. That would be very cool. Yeah, and and in the lower left hand corner of the frame, it looks like there's some some uh, concrete work there. I'd probably just make that go black to match the I agree. The, refre yeah. the reflecting pool just to just to en enhance the symmetry of it. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Very mm -hmm. cool shot. Mm-hmm. Yep. Dig it. Such strong entries. Should put Thomas's uh, Death Star up there in the sky. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. All right, we're coming in for the we're coming in for a landing here. Last shot is from Craig Stamfley. Hey, this looks like a turntable. Dylan Road Roundabout at night. When I, whenever I look at the shot, I just see it. I see a turntable and a and a, and a, a LP on it. That's awesome. I, I I'm looking at the center and I'm wondering like, are those are those like tracks that people have driven over that center? Is that is that thing? Yeah. People just like, ah, screw it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Those are those are expert drivers right there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh man, this is cool. I, I, I like the you know because like, yeah, this one draws you into it because the first look, like I said, I see an album. Uh, and a turntable, obviously, it's not that. And you realize it's a road. And then you realize it's a road that's right along. It looks like on the lower side of the frame, um, that's a beach down there. Or I'm, I'm guessing that's that's ocean water or a cliff of some sort. I, I can't tell. Um, and then at the top, we've got, you know, our foliage and everything. So I don't know. I'm curious what you think. I mean, would, would you have lost that since it's, we're, we're kind of losing detail in the darker area? Um, what would you have done with this or would you have done anything? Um, I, it looks a little bit hot to me. I mean, I probably would have brought the exposure down a bit on the road, uh, to bring in some more blacks and stuff, but I, I wouldn't have done anything else. I mean, I love the crop. I like how we have these, these leading lines in and out of the frame top and bottom, but yet they're dark at the edges. So it doesn't take us out of the photo. Mm -hmm. And you know, you, 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 your eye keeps coming back to those two little triangles on the left and the right of the center. Yeah. And it's just a really, it's a play on shape and form and color. You know, in the headlights, you got the blue streaks and the white streaks, and then that little bit of red streak. Um, no, I, I wouldn't have done a whole lot with this. I probably would have tried it in black and white, but just to see if the shapes and the lines would have changed much. Mm -hmm. But other than that, no, I I, yeah, I, yeah. I I think it's very creative. I don't know what's going on in those lower corners because it's so dark. I mm -hmm. wish there was some detail in there, though. So um, that we could, you know, just so our brain could connect the dot and kind of know where it is, right? Right. But if it's, you know, if it's in a rural area um, and it's only that area is lit only by streetlights, we're not going to get light in those corners. So, yeah, it makes sense, too. Yeah. But I, I like it. it's very creative. Yep. Craig Stanfley at it again. Up to his old tricks. Love it. All right. I think that's it for this this session. We have to we have to pick a winner, man. Um, I have one in mind already. Um Ooh. All right. I got my mouse. I got I brought I opened up the image that I like. I got the one up that I like oh. right here. Oh yeah. Right there. The blue dot. Yep. The pale blue dot right there. That's what we'll call it. <laughs> There's the blue dot. Yeah, I, I do. I, I completely dig it. Yeah. Yep. Candy Shively is our winner then yeah. for, for this episode. Number yep. sixty, the sixty critique. Candy, you can say you won sixty. Number sixty. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, Lovely shot. Really nicely done. Very nicely. Yeah, well done. done. I would love to know more story about this one. 
You know, I mean, like, is this cropped in frame this way? Did you have to do much post processing? Uh, you left you left just the glow of the moon in there at the top. Was that you know? I'd like to know a little bit more about the image. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, man. Oh man, what a good crop of images. I oh. know. I know. Oh, next oh, next month, my camera. Next my camera's jacked up. In, in that case, I'm going to put it on you while I fix my camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. So, uh, thank you. <laughs> exactly. So you can get, you get to take us home. <laughs> oh no, no. Uh, no, I had, to, uh, I had to restart my camera. It's restarting now. She'll be back in a second. Um, so what'd you think? What'd you think overall of all these, uh, all these shots? I think I think they're great. I'm looking. I got candies up right now. I'm still looking at it. I just uh, I'm just so impressed with the with the whole selection of images that we have. You know, the the membership is really rising to the challenge and yeah. and following those themes and putting a lot of effort in there. And you've got a lot of new uh, members that are doing it too. So, and that's brave, right? I mean, yeah. like uh, putting your work out there for anybody to critique or talk about is 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 pretty brave. So kudos to everybody for doing that. Absolutely, and welcome to all the new members. It's good to have all you guys in there. Oh. Yeah. yeah, the community is uh, it's growing, uh, and I'm I'm excited and terrified at the same time. <laughs> like, what have I done? What have I unleashed? Members, you know, make sure that you throw images in in the in the general chat or just in the photography general. I mean, people can we we talk about those images all the time, so it doesn't just have to be during a critique. You can put them in there anytime and share. So that's always good. Everybody likes that. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. All right. Well, folks, remember uh, the next critique, number 61, the topic is motion. Motion, M-O-T-I-O-N, motion. Let's see what you got. Troy Miller is going <laughs> to submit some fire image in there that's in motion, I'm guessing. <laughs> I don't know now, because then there's smoke, and then there's waves, and then there's Clouds. things that catch clouds Ooh, i just did some cool ones in moab with the full moon so maybe that one i want to see some thinking outside of the box though because those are obvious right Long those are obvious yeah. grab, grab okay. your tripod put your camera on there and, you know aim it and you got motion i want to see something that's like oh i didn't really think about that as being motion but it is motion right yeah i'll do one of my fire ones i'll put one of my fire ones in there there you go all right well that's it uh, for episode number 60 of the Twip Pro Photo Critique. I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with next. Troy Miller, thanks for your time again, man. It's always a pleasure. Of course. Thanks for having me. All right. Cool, man. All right. Well, I'll see you next week. All right. Take care. This is Twip.